mode, it will sit there waiting forever for you to walk up with another computer, connect to it over that communications port you specified, and then debug it. So this is when you attach the kernel debugger and analyze it. In WinDebug, you use the file kernel debug option. Let's go back and quickly take a look at that. That option is here, file, I need to stop debugging, and then go to file, kernel debug, and you can see the different options, COM, 1394, and USB. You connect to the machine, and when you've connected, you're basically looking at a crash dump that hasn't been saved to disk yet. And so everything I've told you about analyzing a crash applies. You do your bang analyze dash V. You can also save the dump for offline analysis. Use dot dump to save a mini dump off, or if you want the full contents of memory, unfortunately there's no kernel dump option here, type dump, dot dump F, and that saves, reads the contents of physical memory over the connection and saves it in a target file on the local machine. Note, don't do that over a serial cable. Now, hung systems, another type of crash that doesn't generate a dump. Two types of hangs that I've experienced, instant lockup and then the slow grinding to a halt, where you do something, that doesn't finish, you do something else to try to look at what's going on, that doesn't finish, you try to launch task manager, it never shows up, and then the system totally locks up. To analyze a hung system, you need to take some steps ahead of time. You need to, and you've got two options here, booting the machine in debugging mode, or configuring it so you can crash the machine manually. So I've already described how you boot the machine in debugging mode. Let's talk about the other option, initiating a manual crash. And there's two options here, crashing from the keyboard, which you configure this registry value here for the PS2 keyboard driver, the parameters key, crash on control scroll. You have to create that value, set it to one. This is documented in the help file. And that means that when the system sees the special keystroke sequence, which is right control held down with scroll lock, scroll lock twice, then it will, the keyboard's interrupt service routine will crash the machine. Call K bug check EX. The second option is to configure a dump switch or use the dump switch. Some servers come with an NMI button, non-maskable interrupt. To cause this window to crash when it sees an NMI signal, you go right, configure this registry value right here. You can also make your own dump switch in case if you've got a system that doesn't have one. And you visit this website and it tells you for about $8 how you can go to Radio Shack and buy a button, connect a wire to it, and then connect it to the NMI pin on your motherboard. And if you've never done this, I highly recommend it. It's very gratifying. <laughs> So now that you've got a crash or you're broken into a system that's hung, your step is to, next step is to analyze what's going on. And this is the hard part. Well, actually, let me back up a second. If you've booted the machine in debugging mode and it's hung, you walk up with the second machine, you connect it with the kernel debugger using that kernel debug option. At that point, you've got to hit the break button or type control C and that will send a signal to the kernel debugger on that target machine telling it that you want to break in. In some cases, you're not going to get, be able to break into a hung system. And those situations occur when the RQL of the hung system is above the keyboard's driver and you've configured it for keyboard crashing. Or the system is so hosed that even the NMI interrupt handler is not going to be responding. So what you do at this point, you analyze it the same way we've been analyzing it. Use bang thread to see what's running. Use bang locks to see if there's any possible deadlocks and that's documented in the help file. Use bang RQL to see what the previous RQL was. If you can't figure it out but want to save the dump for later analysis because you want to reboot the machine quickly to get it back into service, use dot .crash to force the system to crash itself. And that will cause the dump to go to the target machine's crash file. Or you can, again, use the dot .dump command to save the crash image to your local machine for analysis. So let's go generate a hung system using not my fault. So I'm back in the... I didn't mean to resume that one. Let me resume this one. This is a version of the VM that has that crash on control. Scroll lock key can, oh, you know what, it's, uh, was this going to work? Yeah. So I'm going to select hang. This should work over a terminal server connection. And I'm going to say do bug. And that machine is totally frozen now. I can do whatever I want to. But I'm going to hit right control and then find the scroll lock key, which I don't know if I've got a spit. 
this keyboard has a funny indicator on that key, so I'm not sure what the button is that I need to also press for it. Uh, maybe shift. Okay, this is not going to work. But what would have happened? I would have hit control, uh, control, scroll lock, scroll lock, and the system would have blue screen instantly. And if you go look at that dump that would be generated by that, which I've saved away from a previous execution, thank goodness, you're going to see a crash that looks like this. First of all, the analysis engine is going to tell you that the keyboard driver caused the problem because it theoretically technically did. It caused called kbug check ex. If you do a bang and line dash v, you're going to see the stack of the thread at the time of the crash. And there it is. So my fault was running, and then it, it was interrupted by that keyboard key press for that last control, that last scroll lock. And then the keyboard driver took over, and it saw that this was the second scroll lock in that sequence and called kbug check ex right there at the top. So what was happening? My fault was running. Big clue that that might be the problem. And I've got a couple of crash scenarios uh, from a real system at home that I experienced. Let me set this up. So I had this system that was periodically hanging. Wanted to troubleshoot it. It was like the, it was a family computer, actually. So I went in and I configured it to crash on control scroll. I rebooted the machine, and lo and behold, it crashed at the reboot. So I went in and I analyzed, opened the crash dump file for it to look at what was causing this new crash. And I hadn't, I'd forgotten to flip the thing to use kernel dumps, so I've got the mini dump from that crash. And this is what it looks like. And uh, here we go. Analyze dash feet. Well, actually, I don't even need to do that. You can see right there, it's prob it figured out who it was probably caused by. If you look at the Analyze dash V. The reason it picked on that, driver equal not less or equal, was, well, there it is right on the stack, being called at dispatch level, because this function executes at dispatch level. That driver, I did a lookup on. So I did LMKV on it. You've got to do this magic syntax, which is documented. And I saw the timestamp that that driver had on it. Very, very old. I went to the vendor's website. I'm not going to embarrass the vendor here, but let's just say that they're known for audio devices. And figured out that they had a much newer version of this driver, downloaded it, installed it. Installed it, rebooted the machine, and to my great joy, it hung after the reboot. So I had the opportunity at that point to do the crash on control scroll to see what was causing the hangs. And I've got the kernel dump from that, and this is what I saw. Well, first of all, it's going to tell us manual crash. But then I did a bang thread. And I saw this. This driver, WPN111, which happens to be a wireless network adapter driver, calling NDIS acquire spin lock. And then it got interrupted by the crash at that point. So it was trying to acquire some spin lock, never being able to acquire it. Note that there's a zero down here. And the kernel debugger works on multiprocessor machines, and it lets you look at what's going on in each CPU. It tells you which CPU you've got to focus on right there. This is a two-way system, and I'm on CPU 0. Ooh, that was a nice ring. <laughs> so I'm on CPU 0. Let me switch to CPU 1, which you're going to want to do if you get a hang, look at every CPU and do the same bang thread. And the stack looks similar. It's not quite as deep, but it's that same driver trying to acquire spin lock. This driver, I did the LMKV, figured out it was an old version, went to the vendor's website, download the new version. That system has been problem-free since this fantastic afternoon, very exciting afternoon of crash and hang analysis. So one last thing, analyzing a six system, if they're, ah, here we go, uh, went a little too far. Analyzing a sick system, sometimes the system is still responsive, but you know something's wrong with it. You can get a dump of that system to analyze offline, and the reason I'm telling you this is Microsoft PSS, several people there have told me that they use this to troubleshoot customer systems to get dumps of them that they can go analyze without crashing the server until they figured out what the fix is. And you use the tool called LiveKD, which is a free download from Sysinternals, 